I've been reading um, some things you've said over the last year or so, and one of the things you talked about pretty honestly is that you've had symptoms of PTSD, you've had some nightmares, you've had panic attacks. As this trial now gets ready to start in about 10 days, has that somewhat kind of, in, you know, inflamed that issue? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's been a, it's been a hard month. Um, I. Uh, it's it's so crazy to. It's happening so fast. Um, it's it's happening, um, and I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. But I'm uh, I'm trying to do everything I can to to make a difference. I look back. April 30th was the last time I saw you make a comment where you said you were still considering going. You yeah. were still considering going there. Now you've said no. You will not be there to stand trial. How much of it? I think most people would assume that much of that decision was based on the fear that if you're found guilty, you could go right back to prison and you won't see the United States for a long time. The uh, I look at it as I. <laughs> I was already imprisoned as an innocent person in Italy, and I can't reconcile the the choice to go back with with that experience. It's it's not a possibility. It is I was imprisoned as an innocent person, and I I just can't relive that. I um, I'm not. A I don't think I'm going to be put back in prison. I think that we're going to win. That's why I'm fighting this fight. That's why I continue to to put put forth the defensive argument in court. If but but you know that by saying I will not go back there, there are going to be some people who look at that decision and say it's a sign of guilt. She's got something to hide and she doesn't want to stand trial. I look at it as an admission of innocence, to be quite honest, because. I mean, besides the fact that there are so many factors that are not allowing me to go back, financial ones, ones where I'm going to school, ones where I don't, I want the court to proceed without distraction, it's, I was, I was imprisoned as an innocent person. And, and that, it's common sense not to go back. If I'm the prosecutor, though, I think you're handing me an opportunity. You know, because first of all, you don't get a chance to make an impassioned plea for your innocence the way you did in Italian right. the last time around. And if I'm that prosecutor, as I'm getting up there and I'm telling the court about your trustworthiness and your version of the facts and the character issues that they brought up in the first two trials, I get to point at an empty chair and I get to look and say, look, she didn't even care enough to come back and stand trial. And that that drives me crazy. I understand that risk, but what is being on trial here is not my character. It shouldn't be. What should be on trial is the facts of the case. And if you if you look at the facts of the case, there there's proof of my innocence in there being no uh, there's there's no trace of me in the room where my friend was murdered. There's traces all over the place of the man who actually did this. It, Rudy Gade was convicted. His his DNA was everywhere, and it's impossible for me to have participated in this crime if I if there's no trace of me. You, you've said you you still have faith in the Italian legal system, the justice system. That's the system that convicted you the first time, overturned that conviction on appeal, and then ordered a new trial. How do you still have faith in the system that's gone back and forth like that? Well. Two judges looked at this case, Judge Hellman and Judge Zanetti of the appeal trial, and they saw that I was innocent. They, they acquitted me for being innocent. In Italy, you can be acquitted both ways. You can be acquitted for not, there being not enough evidence to prove your guilt, and you can be acquitted for being innocent. And they found me innocent, and so that renewed my faith in the justice system, which, I mean, at this point, it's also, people have told me, well, why do you even keep fighting? And it's, it's... I believe that that is possible. I believe that people who really care about justice and who really look at this without prejudice are going to come to the same conclusion. How are you going to keep up with this trial? Is there some sort of a closed circuit feed that you'll be able to see each day? You're going to be going to school, so your time is an issue. Are you going to watch it every day? So I'm not quite sure about watching it. I'm definitely going to be in contact with my lawyers. So what I'm what I'm planning is that they will call me for every break that happens during a single court session. They'll call me, tell me what's happening. Um, and will you then, have input? Will you, will you talk to them about, will you make suggestions? Um, 
Well, it's, it's, I'm trying to figure out how this will be because during court I would listen and I would say, well, that person's saying something that's completely inaccurate. Can you ask them a question? Um, and I won't be there this time. I'm really not sure what it's going to look like and I'm, I'm waiting to see.